Hey, what's up? This is Alex Chu. Coming at you with another episode. In this episode, I want to talk about uh, how to overcome the grief of a dead pet. Okay? Uh, but before I talk about that, I want to tell you that my name is Alex Chu. I'm the guy who invented these physical immortality rings. These are rings that you can put on your small fingers, you stop aging, you don't age anymore, you become physically immortal, you know. And 90%, 80% of my customers give me 5 stars or 4 star reviews on my Amazon uh, page, okay. So if you want to stay physically young forever, you go to livemuchlonger.com, livemuchlonger.com. The link is at the bottom of this video. Uh, I, have a, I have a pet, okay. I have four cats, and now one of the pets is not doing well. It's a few days ago he was okay. He's always at the door greeting me when I come back home, right? He's a little skinny, but then I don't see anything wrong. It's just very—he has very good appetite, you know. I mean, I mean, he loves grilled chicken, you know. Does he loves steak, you know, pork, whatever? He, he's very, very good appetite. All sorts of, you know, he loves cat wet food and dry food and everything. It's just, but until I didn't see anything wrong until yesterday, you know. I mean, I noticed very heavy breathing, and then suddenly he lost his appetite. Just don't want to eat anymore. Oh man! I, then I check online. I, I I check the symptoms, and I realize, oh, this is a FIP. I forgot how do you say. I forgot how you say FIP, but. Uh, it's a very serious, uh, hold on a minute. <coughs> it's a very serious, uh, you know, feline disease, yeah. Basically, there's fluid inside his lung, and he, uh, he's choking himself to death. <coughs> yeah, it's, I remember, uh, in 2013, I had another cat that died. Oh, my God, that one. Oh, I, that, that that devastated me. I I have always wanted. I, I was suicidal. I wanted to kill myself. I, I swear to God, when that cat died, oh, I I knew I cannot die because I have a job. You know, I have a job to fulfill. And I, I mean, God gave me a very important job. I have to fulfill this job. I that when that cat cat died, oh, I, I was suicidal, man. I, but anyway, this one is gonna die too. You know, I don't think he's gonna last very long. But. How do I overcome the grief? Well, I, I think that hey, you know, he ate lots of pork, lots of chicken, lots of uh, beef. You know, you know, he's every time I feed him pork, chicken, beef, and he he eats it. He, he eats it like he's a he's a king, and I'm the servant. You know, I'm just I'm his chef. I cook for him, and he eats it like he's a king. Now it's his turn, right? Now it's his turn to die. You know. <laughs> You know, now it's his turn to be slaughtered by God, and, and uh, everybody has a turn. Even one day, I'm gonna die too. You know, I mean, I'm the guy who invented physical mortality. You put on the rings, you don't age anymore. But everybody, everyone's gonna die someday. You know, I mean, this 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 world, this this earth will not last forever. One day, a meteor is gonna come crashing down down this earth and destroy everything. Everybody has to die someday. You know. But anyway, how to overcome grief of your dead pet? Yeah, you know, just think. I mean, everybody has to take his turn. You know, it's it's turn for my cat to die. You know, it's turn for him to be slaughtered and to be fed to the animals. So when he dies, I'm just gonna toss him in the backyard. I I have a backyard. It's, it's like a I live on top of a hill, right? And there's a lot of bushes. I'm just you know dig a very shallow grave. I'm just gonna put him in there. No, no covering, nothing. No, no coffin, nothing. Just dump him in into that that shallow grave and allow raccoons or rats or skunk to dig him up and eat him up. You know, I mean, it's his turn. You know, because I mean, he lived uh, five years with me. I don't know. I I fed him lots of chicken, lots of pork, lots of beef, wet food, dry food, and. They were all made of animal parts, you know. So he enjoyed it for for a good five years, right? Now it's t it's his time, you know. His time is up. 
So when he dies, I'm just gonna toss him in the backyard. You know, I'll let raccoons eat him up. You know, I do the same with my goldfish too. I had a goldfish that oh man, just, just, I think it was my fault. You know, it's I think it was too much algae, and I didn't know my goldfish was allergic to algae. And uh, I also tossed the the goldfish outside, all in the backyard, and the the raccoons took took it. But everybody has to take turns, you know. I mean, so what is your pet? Your pet is, you know, your pet is nobody special, right? Slaughter all this chicken, all this, all this uh, pigs and and cattle just to feed these uh, these pet cats and pet dogs. You know, it's I mean that's not fair. They have to die one day, right? Now it's now it's his turn, his turn to be fed to the raccoons or to the rats or skunks. Um. Me too. One day, you know, when I die too, you know, when I die, I don't want to be cremated, or I don't want to, I don't want them to uh, put any chemical on my body to preserve me in a coffin or anything like that. No, I was thinking the best way to to be buried is probably be buried at sea. You know, probably yeah, dump me into the ocean, just feed it to the feed feed the body to the squid. You know, I like I like it natural. You know. This is, See, that's the reason why, you know, Judaism, it's all about how you go back to the nature. You know, uh, in Judaism, the proper way to bury a person is to, not to put a person's body in a coffin. No, you just basically dig a hole in the ground. You put the person in the hole, and then you cover the body with a, a blanket, or a piece of cloth or something. You know, and then you bury it. That's it. No coffin. No mausoleum, no coffin, nothing like that. That's that's the traditional, traditional Jewish burial. You know, of course nowadays it's considered bad hygiene. You know, nowadays that's not acceptable. But in the ancient times, it's like that. You know, I believe Judaism is the most natural. You know, they, people should be buried that way, really, because it's a, it's that's the way how you go back to the nature. You know, why do you want to? Cut down some some trees just to build coffins, you know, for to to uh, you know to bury some, you know, to, you're you're killing trees to in order to, you know, to uh, abide somebody who's already dead. It, just, it doesn't make any sense, you know. Yeah, you know, people should not cut down trees just to bury some some dead asshole. You know, honestly speaking, everything should be natural. So, and uh, I think. Uh, after my cat Max dies, I think I'm gonna go back to the vet. I mean, go back to the shelter to to adopt another cat. Because remember, there are lots of cats and dogs inside the shelter. They need your help, right? If your pet died, you know, don't be crying all over it. You know, just go back to the shelter, uh, get another one because it's you know it's because they need your help. You understand? You're the only one who could who could take them out. You don't you don't rescue these these pets. You don't rescue these cats or dogs. They're gonna get euthanized by the shelter, you know. So somebody has to do something, right? If my my cat died, you know, I, I don't have time for 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 grief. I just go back to the shelter and get another one, you know, because there's another cat out there that needs my help, you know, that needs my attention, you know. I treated him well. I treated my cat well, you know. I mean, I, I I'm a pretty good cook, you know. Grow chicken, grow beef, whatever he wants, you know. It's now it's his turn, you know. But anyway, next time, you know, if you you have to handle a, the the death of a pet, just think about what I said, you know. Everybody has his everybody has his turn, you know. Okay, I'll talk to you later.